Sup, motherfuckers? I made a basic scene with a basic enemy, and here it is right here. It's just one camera angle, and this is viewing uh, our enemy right here, and he's just going in random directions, but he's not changing frames to match those directions. So first off, in this, his speed is 3.0. That's what I have by default. Two timers, and then like we'll have a velocity and a gravity. Right here we have uh, two integers, one named frame number, and the other named current angle. Frame number keeps track of the current absolute frame that we're on, regardless of angle, and current angle keeps track of the angle that we're facing with the sprite. The absolute uh, frame is there just in case we go out of bounds of the sprite 3D. So the current angle is already being set, and right here you can see we're setting our timers. This is going every uh, 24 frames per second, which is 1 divided by 24. You could just like find it on a calculator, but I just chose to do it like this is right here. And uh, I have it connected to the increase frame function. So every 20, 24 times per second, this is called. There's definitely a better way you could do this. You could probably use an animation player, but I'm gonna show how to do it first without that. Right here, after like we just added as a child, then start it because I, uh, the one shot is set to false. So I'll just keep calling itself. And uh, move timer is also set to false with one shot. And it's set to the idle move function. The idle move function resets the horizontal axes on the velocity and then finds a new direction for the enemy to go in. So right here we're finding eight random directions and passing it back to the direction vector right here. And this is given by the rand i mod three minus one. So we're getting a value of negative one, zero, or one. And this is given to both the x and z axes, which is returned back to direction then passed in to get current angle, which gives us an integer value that's our current angle. So we give that integer value back to current angle from the function, which affects everything else in the script. As you can see right here, we have a vector 3 of negative 1 when it's facing east in the x-axis, and a vector 3 of negative 1 in the x-axis and positive 1 when facing northeast. So this is because Godot finds west as positive instead of east as positive, like I do. So right here you can see if we when we face uh, z positive, uh, right here, then the x is negative when the z axis is, when you're facing the positive z axis. And uh, that just means that from their terminology, this is positive x. So with my code, like how I'd like to do it, that means we need to think backwards. And that's why we're given a negative one in the x axis to have it face east. So when it's moving negative one, it's moving east from, from Godot's perspective. And yeah, so uh, basically, like this just like, this still follows the trig chart. So it goes east, northeast, north, northwest, west, southwest, south, then southeast. And this is like southeast is negative one on both. And then um, northwest is positive one on both. So yeah. So basically just this one statement right here gives eight different directions. If, and like, uh, if all of them are zero, if both of them are zero, I mean, that means we just return the current angle and we just don't, basically we don't do anything to the current angle, we just return itself. So with the animation function, we have a start frame and a max frame. And like uh, basically what this is, is it'll start from this frame and keep going, and once it hits this frame, it'll reset itself back to the start frame. So in the animation function, we want to be able to play the animation forwards and backwards. If we want to play it forwards, then we're gonna start the start frame first. So if the start frame is less than the max frame, we're gonna play the animation normally, otherwise, play the animation backwards. Now we're just gonna check if the start frame is greater than max frame and we're using an else if right here because we do not want to do an else. We want to make sure they are not equal or else we just won't play the animation no matter what. But if start frame is greater than max frame, we're gonna play the animation backwards. And if it's less than max frame, we're gonna play the animation forwards or normally. Each call to animation will just increase or decrease the frame by one. So right here we just want to increase the frame by one and then check if we have surpassed the max frame. If we've surpassed the max frame or at the max frame, then we're going to reset the frame to the start frame. So if we go from zero to eight, let's say, well, uh, once it hits eight, then it's going to go back to zero. And now just like play the animation in a loop if we keep calling this. So you could just, you could probably have some way to detect if um, we're done with the animation. Uh, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to play in a loop constantly. So basically how you do that probably is you would like return like a uh, false animations done or return true for the animation being done. But yeah, or you can just return something, whatever. But right here, I'll just make it a void function. So we'll have frame number right here. If we're playing it backwards, all we're going to do is just subtract by one. Even when we subtract, we need to make sure it doesn't surpass max frame. So we're going to do this by making sure that it is less than or equal to max frame. 
So if it's gotten less than or equal to max frame, that means we're about to surpass it. So we need to reset back to the start frame. And then we also need to make sure it's in bounds. So if it goes below zero, we're going to set it back to the start frame again. So this means that the max possible frame when you're going backwards is zero. So right here, we're just going to set it back to frame number um, equal to start frame. Now you're going to want to test that animation function just to make sure you have it correct. If you're using like an animation player, then you probably test it using that way and just go from start to finish. So from zero to H frames times V frames of the Sprite 3D. So here's our current Sprite sheet in this whole thing. So uh, right here, the first row is this when uh, we have a value of zero as a current angle. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And uh, yeah, so this is facing east, northeast, north, Northwest, west, and then like the last three are southwest, south, and southeast. And those are all eight directions. And each uh, one, each row has 13 columns or 13 frames, like I've seen right here. And boom. Yeah. Those are uh, just one row. And you see if you count that, that's 13. And yeah, so that'll be about 104. So it'll go from zero to frame 104. And then we're just going to set the sprite 3d dot frame equal to frame number because frame number is being set in the animation. So let's go. Let's see this. So boom. It's just playing all the animations and just like uh, from straight to linear. So it doesn't matter which direction it's going. Yet. It's going outside the camera. But yeah. But as you see, it's just playing all of them in like a loop. And just going into the last frame and then it just resets back to the start frame. So you can already see how it's working right there. Because the first frame is when it faces east. And as you notice it went all the way right here. And then went back to there. So that's what our animation function is doing right now. But as you notice it's only playing in one. Okay, so first off we have a, an ISO animation. We have an angle and a start angle. This has changed from, I used to call it start frame, but uh, I think start angle is a better terminology for it. So first off, we just need to check if the start angle is greater than zero. So we're gonna check that by checking if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, we're just gonna print an error message, then return. So in the ISO animation, we have an angle and a start angle. The angle just represents which direction we're currently facing with the sprite, and the start angle represents the frame that we want to start from. So the start angle, if we have it anything greater than one, then it'll start from a different row than the previous. So in our sprite sheet, as you can see, there's only one animation here, eight different directions. But let's say you had two animations, which would be 16 different directions. If you set a start angle to like a different value than zero, it would go to that value. So if we set a start value of eight, it would go all the way to the next animation. Or we could just offset the animation in case you only want to play one animation from a certain angle. Like let's say if an enemy is attacking the player and you have a first person game and you're using this, you only need to animate the attack from one direction if it's single player. If it's single player, if you, it, like uh, the enemy will always be facing you if it attacks. All right, so first we're gonna find the current frame. So the current frame right here, we're gonna have it uh, as a type of int this is so it'll throw an error if we give it something else. And uh, we're gonna give it a value, the value of frame number, and then we're gonna mod it by sprite3d.hframes. What this is doing is uh, each, uh, we're uh, modding it by the columns because we wanna get the current part of the animation that it's on. So let's say if we're in uh, row five or something, I don't know, I think this is row five, and we're in the middle of the animation, we switch it back to row two, we wanna pick up from this spot of the animation and go all the way over here to row two, I think, and then we'll like uh, play, start from this animation. I think this is row four, actually. Yeah, if we wanna go from row four to row two, we wanna play the next part of the animation, and we also wanna keep track of where we are in it too. So that way we switch angles and we keep track of the animation. So that way it doesn't look awkward. It's possible that the angle could change before calling this function. So we want to make sure that we get the right row of the sprite sheet while playing the animation. We'll do this by getting the current frame and then adding the angle times sprite3d.hframes. This will allow us to pick the correct row while also having the correct frame of the animation. 
This is because we're multiplying by the width of the sprite sheet. We're treating this like a 2D array. So we're getting the angle times the sprite.h frames for the rows, and then we're adding current frame, which is basically the columns. So we're getting the right columns and the right rows. Because we're times it by 13, so if we have like, let's say four, and we times it by 13, we'll go right here. And uh, yeah, so let's go back. After that, this is where the start angle comes in. Now we could add this to the uh, last part of this, just add another addition, but I like to put it right here just because it's kind of a different thing. So I'm just gonna do plus equals and then do um, start angle times sprite 3D dot H frames. So this just uh, basically will find which part of the animation we're on. We'll find the new angle and then we'll add our start angle to it times H frames so that way we pick which row we want. So let's say if we're playing the second animation, not the first, we want to add eight to it. So we'll go all the way down here and start playing from here. And then we'll find the right angle. So let's say if it feels like angle two, then we'd find uh, basically the angle two of that animation, which would be like down here or something. That's if it, we, we had multiple animations in the same sprite sheet. Sometimes you might want to do that. And uh, yeah, so that is a, uh, pretty much most of the ISO animation function because right now since we have the start angle and we have the angle we could just do it all in one call it's actually really nice watch this so I, I could just do animation call that so we have the start frame to the max frame and then all we need to do right here is do the start angle plus the angle because this is the angle that we're starting from and then we're adding the angle to that. So that way if it's greater than, if this is greater than zero, we want to change the angle that we're currently playing. So that way we're playing a different animation if we want to. And then after that, we're going to times that by sprite3d.h frames. And boom, we have that. Yeah, we're times it by sprite3d.h frames. So that way we get the right row to start from. So we have our start angle. We're starting from uh, that and going to this part. Because we're not gonna include the frame number into this equation. All we're gonna do is just like start from the beginning of the animation to the end of the animation on the right angle that we have. And right here, we're gonna do start angle plus angle plus one. Because we're going to the next, to the last part of this animation. And then once again, we're gonna do sprite3d.h frames and multiply it by to this but right here at the end, we're gonna also subtract by one so that way it doesn't go to the next part of the animation. And boom, we have our entire ISO animation. Watch, I'll play this. Now he will be switching, turning the right way on each part. So this pretty much sums everything up. But um, as you notice in the video, I didn't go over some stuff. Maybe like this, like this is just um, checks like if we've gone past the last frame. So it just prints out like a little error message just to warn the person, whoever's using this, that they've gone out of bounds. And also we're gonna check if this is going out of bounds. And boom. Yeah, so uh, basically it'll say, oh, out of bounds, it's less than zero. Oh, out of bounds, you're greater than sprite H frames times V frames. So you just need to make sure that uh, that we have that we're, uh, that we're not greater than the last frame, which is H frames times V frames. And yeah, there we are. Okay, so have a good day, motherfuckers. See your asses later. Mm. Yeah, woo!